So Jesus made my heart pure and he makes me like him and he is a peacemaker. Now we're gonna talk about peace kind of a lot here in the next couple of weeks as we really lean into what it means to be a blessed is the peacemaker. Uh, Cause I felt like that it really needed more explanation than what we could do with just one group, life group or one talk. So we're gonna try it, that we wanna go deeper. Now peace is what we really need now. Our nation's a mess. We have so much unrest and so many people are living in conflict and troubles. And the bliss of God is found in becoming like Jesus. And Jesus is a peacemaker. So Jewish people have a word for peace that's called shalom. And we'll talk more about shalom later. But shalom means peace that's in resting in the perfection of the bliss of God. It's the absence of conflict to be perfectly contented. It's shalom. It's peace. It's bliss. It's those things. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus said this, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. In other words, when you're a peacemaker, you carry, you carry on the characteristics of God, and you're known as his son. I am blessed living in bliss when I'm a peacemaker. So how is this possible? Now, we're going to look at peace, and before I jump into peace, I want to talk about the five global giants that are really ruining humanity right now. Uh, their first one is spiritual emptiness. People are just lost without Christ. They need Jesus. And that giant of spiritual emptiness is prevalent and moving and becoming more and more pervasive uh, in the world. In fact, people are turning away from Christ and they're turning toward false spiritualities and legalisms and mysticism and all that stuff. And they're missing the good things of God through Jesus Christ, mainly because us Christians have behaved poorly over the years. So spiritual emptiness is a huge global giant. Egocentric leaders, and I'm not talking about just third world despots. I'm talking about uh, politicians and leaders and pastors even in churches. They're just egocentric and they lead people in the wrong way. And uh, They're a huge, a huge problem, a, a spiritual giant. And then you have um, poverty. Uh, poverty is, is this real issue. When people can't eat, they can't live. And in our nation right now, we have people suffering under poverty and there really is a an attitude of some that just really don't care. They could just be hungry. And there's times we look down on people that are struggling like in homelessness and we blame their situation on their decisions and that may be true, but that doesn't excuse us not to be careful and graceful and loving and good. <clears throat> just because someone made a life decision that broke them doesn't mean we should continue to kick them. And then there's, uh, there's pandemic diseases. Hello, we're in one right now. Nobody asked for the coronavirus. Nobody asked for AIDS. Nobody asked for malaria. Or nobody asked for uh, cholera. Or you can go on and on with the pandemic diseases. It's not a sin to be sick, but it sure is a sin not to care for the sick. And that's the, the fourth global giant. The last is miseducation of children and, and letting children just go astray. And I, I read a study the other day that our school age children are a full year behind in their educational development. Is that okay? I go around the world and I realize a lot of the squalor that people live in is because of lack of education. They just don't know any better. Who's, who's going to teach them? Who's going to teach them basic sanitation? Who's going to teach them basic human rights? Who's going to do that? Shouldn't that be the church's job? So these five global giants require really bold initiatives from God's people that we must be peacemakers. Now, I want to talk about peace. How is peace possible? And I want to talk about peace on three levels. And first of all, is your personal peace, how you personally can be a peacemaker. It says this in Romans 5, Therefore, since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because I belong to Jesus, I don't have to keep trying to be right with God. I live in the reality that I am right with God. I don't have to keep seeking peace with God because I already have it through Jesus Christ. Stop your striving and start your thriving. I live in peace. One of the greatest barriers to living in peace, a peacemaker, is that we don't fully embrace the peace that we've been given from God through Jesus Christ. Because I've been given this, then I am compelled to share what I've been given with others. I do that. Listen to 1 Peter. But in your hearts regarding Christ the Lord is holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. 
Yet do this with gentleness and reverence, keeping a clear conscience so that when you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. In other words, I'm not supposed to be some kind of fuller brush salesman jerk, but be a person who helps people find peace that I found through Jesus. My hope, I want to share it. The most powerful story you have is yours because nobody can refute it. And you look for opportunities to share it, to seek peace, to share peace, to bring calm and hope into every situation. I'm not wringing my hands in worry, but I'm lifting my hands in prayer because I have personal peace with God. Therefore, I can give it away. I can use this, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any moral excellence, there's anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. It doesn't say dwell on conspiracy theories, y'all. It doesn't say dwell on things that, that incite a panic and disorder and make us be judged. It doesn't say that. It's not Christian to do that. It's Christian to focus on whatever's pure and whole lovely and commendable and honorable and just and right and true, praiseworthy. Wow. And when I have that personal peace and I'm contagious to give that away to others, then I can look and see that I have a local responsibility to be distributors of peace to the people around me in context with the community called the church. This church called First Baptist Church Wimberley, and wherever you are watching, it has a responsibility to be an extender of local peace. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. I embrace my responsibility to bring God's peace to those around me as I live in community. Now, peace is brought through attacking those global giants that I'm going to meet physical, spiritual, emotional, and relational needs with people around me. That's why at this church called First Baptist, we feed people. We provide food for them when they're hungry. We're assisting the poor. We care for the sick. That's why we host vaccination sites, because we care for the sick. This is part of God's peace. It's why we equip leaders according to God's peace. We do these things. You see, the rise of self-appointed prophets that has brought about more strife and co conflict in the local church is more about self-centeredness and less about peace. We're the pe people who bring calm, not conflict. What you think about that? Think about what you're putting in your mind and your heart in these days of conspiracy. Then we have a responsibility for global peace, not just peace that's personal and around us, but then globally. Far too long, the church has outsourced its missions to outside organizations and denomination, denominational boards. We have a responsibility to share God's peace globally. That's why we formed the Building Lives Churches Network. Over 80 churches now scattered throughout North America and Latin America to help bring God's peace in healthy churches and healthy pastors who create God's peace globally throughout the world. Matthew 28, it says this, Jesus came near to them and saying, All authority has been given me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. This is called the Great Commission. So we have at this church, this Building Lives Church, this First Baptist Church, Wimberley, we have a strategy. It's called the Peace Plan, and we live it out. What does that peace plan mean? It spells peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. The P stands for planting and partnering with local churches. That's what we do. We look for opportunities to join God in the local church, whether it's in uh, our county, Hayes County, or whether it's in our uh, surrounding counties, in Texas, or North America, or the ends of the earth. We look to partner with local churches. Now, how do we do that? By equipping servant leaders by helping pastors be healthy and helping leaders be healthy, by assisting the poor, helping them find ways and pathways out of poverty, not a hand out, but a hand up, by uh, caring for the sick, by leaning in and, and doing things like um, helping them with clean water and sanitation and, and, and basic triage and care, just simple things, to the complex things about sending doctors to help instruct. 
uh, educating the present and the future generations so they will not repeat the, the terrible things of their past by learning how to dig latrines and have clean water and cook their food and wash their hands and simple things that will prevent things from going astray or breaking generational sin curses of racism or elitism by educating the future generations. This is God's peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. You know what? It attacks all those global giants. The local church attacks spiritual uh, desperation and lostness. Uh, educating leaders attack egocentric leaders. Equipping servant leaders attacks egocentric leaders. Um, poverty is faced by killing the giant of poverty through assisting. Care is facing the, the giant of pandemic diseases by caring for the sick. And then education of the future generations attacks the, uh, the giant of ignorance and miseducation. All these things are the peace plan delivered by God. And it all comes from a pure transplanted heart. Blessed are the peacemakers because they have a pure heart who have mourned over their sins, who live in humility, who realize their need, who desire Jesus, all of him. And this leads to a life change based on the attitude change of Jesus. Have a great discussion about what God is doing in and for and through you and us for his kingdom. I hope this is helpful.